Hello and welcome to my review of 13 Sentinels Aegis Rim. Developed by prestige Japanese game studio Vanillaware and published on the Sony PlayStation 4 by Atlas in Japan of November 28, 2019 and the rest of the world on September 22, 2020. It was written and directed by Vanillaware president George Kamitami. 13 Sentinels Aegis Rim is both a side-scrolling adventure game and a mecha RTS, real-time strategy, tower defense game. If I had to describe it in one sentence, I would say 13 Sentinels was smarter than me, in just the right ways. Unfortunately, I do not have a whole lot of experience with Vanillaware's repertoire. I played maybe 10 minutes of Muramasa of the Demon Blade when I hacked my Nintendo Wii to make sure it worked, and around 30 minutes of Odin's Fear Lifrithseer, and never got back to it. 13 Sentinels Aegis Rim was never really on my radar. I was aware about its long development cycle, and it would show up at various gaming events and expos without a release date for the last few years, but I never really had much interest in it until fairly recently, when several prolific Japanese game creators came out to sing the game's praises. Super Smash Bros. creator Masahiro Sakurai saying that it's a one-of-a-kind of experience that is impossible to imitate, and Yoko Taro, one of my personal favorite game directors, saying that Japan needs a developer like Vanillaware and he doesn't really care what happens to Atlas as long as they continue to exist. With the amount of praise coming from game creators whose games I generally like and from people who played and can read Japanese, I was keen on really wanting to look at it for myself. I knew little to nothing about the game, but I did have some expectations based off my very little experience with Vanillaware's games and also watching the trailers, and some of those expectations include giant robots, a beautiful, almost painted 2D art style, and also Vanillaware just maybe getting a tad horny. I think that's kind of a common thread in all of their games. 13 Sentinels is a complex and meticulous science fiction narrative that is able to neatly put together all of its setups and plot threads while also focusing on 13 different main characters and never losing focus. The game's construction is just so elegant and impressive, I can't help but admire the amount of hard work and craftsmanship that must have gone into crafting it and now, you know, after finishing the game, I'm willing to put 13 Sentinels in my top three games released on this console generation along with such heavy hitters like Devil May Cry 5 and Nier Automata. So now we get to what I consider to be the biggest problem that I have when reviewing this game. The best parts of 13 Sentinels are all things you should really see for yourself within the context of the game. Which is why none of the footage in this video is going to come from past the game's prologue, and I also I don't plan on spoiling any of the plot points or twists. If you want a general idea of what the game is, 13 Sentinels is a narrative-driven adventure game that will sometimes take a detour into some strategy-based tower defense sections. You see the story through 13 different main characters, each character offering different perspectives, plot lines, and even storytelling styles. The game's tower defense segments are where you deploy up to six of your characters to fend off attacking enemies, and these will often have little bits of dialogue with each of the main characters before and after. And lastly, you have both an in-game timeline that orders every single scene in a chronological order, and an in-game encyclopedia, which is probably one of my favorite tropes in Japanese adventure games. I always just love the in-game encyclopedia, even when it goes down to just describing and explaining the most mundane ideas. The narrative in 13 Sentinels is sort of like if you had 13 separate jigsaw puzzles. While each one of them in this baker's dozens of puzzles feels fairly distinct, once you finish all 13 of them, then you can put together the complete jigsaw puzzles to make one uber puzzle. Now, as you sit down to start assembling this admittedly large number of jigsaw puzzles, you find out that before you even sat down at the table, someone came along, mixed up all the puzzle pieces into different boxes. You might get far along with making one puzzle, only to realize you need to move on to a different one so you can find more pieces for the previous one you were working on. However, this is also different from putting together normal jigsaw puzzles, because while putting these puzzles together, you also have to kill cockroaches that are crawling up onto the table with a giant robot, and also, unlike normal jigsaw puzzles, this game isn't boring. Burn! Shooting cockroaches while assembling this group of puzzles is kind of like these strategy-based tower defense combat sections I mentioned earlier, where you have to defend a terminal on the map from attacking enemies, referred to as kaiju, and these sections are a lot more fun and engaging than I was expecting. Going into 13 Sentinels, I was expecting the combat to feel like just superfluous filler. Instead, it's a mode I would eagerly engage with whenever I had the chance. Across your 13 pilots, you have four different types of giant robots at your disposal. Each type has different utilities, from ones that hit hard and pierce armor, to flying types that can get around quickly, and sometimes certain characters can have exclusive moves that make them more viable in some situations. A few of the characters have passive abilities that increase stats depending on your team composition, which will incentivize you to think about what characters you pick. The game's not too difficult on normal, so I never really felt the need to 
really try and plan out my team, but the difficulty did definitely start to ramp up towards the end, and it might be something that's required for more intense difficulties. I wouldn't know because I prefer playing all my games on the standard one, and also, if you just want to enjoy the story, there is an easier mode that basically makes every single combat encounter in the game trivial. The combat in 13 Sentinels, at a glance, looks pretty confusing, but actually, underneath its complicated looking user interface, it's pretty simple. You move your mecha along the city streets, unless they're the flying ones, and perform moves that cost you energy points. You get a short description before each mission so you can synthesize a workable team to try and reach the stage's bonus requirements then get you more data for your in-game log. Doing consecutive battles without healing in a row will give you multipliers for upgrade points, but putting a character in two battles in a row will give them brain overload and knock them out of battle, which is kind of like when I was in college I would cram eight different reading assignments into a single night because procrastinating and playing video games are two of my favorite pastimes, which is also one of the reasons why this video has taken me so long to make after finishing it. The battle presentation makes it kind of look like you're looking at an older PC game, with every unit being represented by a small icon on the map. It looks basic at first, but it also allows them to shove as many enemies as possible in the larger stages. Outside of battles, the art on display in the narrative section is just... incredible. Despite not playing many of Vanillaware's games, I've always admired the amount of craft and work that goes into making their games have this dreamlike, handmade, watercolor painted style. The city architecture has light peeking through the gaps, old buildings having dust in the air, city streets being bathed in car and street lights. 13 Sentinels has some of the best art direction I've had the pleasure of seeing in a video game, and running through these painted environments just never gets old. Everything from the environments, the character designs, mechanical designs, and UI design all work together to giving the game its unique look. While the game's visuals are exceptional, they're backed by an equally excellent, nearly five-hour original soundtrack composed by several Vanillaware mainstays, including Hitoshi Sakimoto, the composer of Final Fantasy XII and several other Square Enix games, but he's not the only composer. All seven of the game's composers came together to create a soundtrack I describe as an electronic and ambient techno-nostalgic soundscape. I don't know how much sense that made. It makes sense to me. It's I think that's probably the most important part. Some tunes left me with a melancholic and nostalgic feeling while other tracks ramp up and fit the tension of a scene. battles, the game switches to a more electronic type of music to fit the mecha combat. The game's soundtrack is only as good as its direction, and 13 Sentinels has pretty good sound direction. I never really noticed a ton of over-repeated tracks or anything that felt out of place, and many of the battle segments had a perfect music choice. Specifically, Area 2 Stage 10. Stage 210 is the reason why I think games can be such strong device for interactive storytelling, and if you want to know why that is, you should probably buy the game and check it out for yourself. The game also has a pretty good English dub and translation, even if it might lean on being a little too authentic. Look, I don't translate video games or well anything really, I'm just a stupid guy that only speaks English. If you're someone who doesn't like a Japanese game having Japanese honorifics in its translation, then you might see an issue here. Personally, if the game takes place in Japan, characters are Japanese, I don't mind it, but it gets a little weird when they're carried over to the English dub, but it's a quirk I've gotten used to after playing the Persona series. One other oddity I found weird is when a character talks about yakisoba bread, they call it yakisoba pawn. 
in Japanese, pawn literally just translates to bread. It's incredibly strange it was translated like that. Other than these small issues, the English script is pretty fantastic. Come on! My yakisoba pawn! I didn't even get a single bite! You just made a big mistake, punk. Like I said before, 13 Sentinels Aegis Rim was smarter than me. Every time I thought I was making a concrete theory that would explain what's going on, a character would say some innocuous line and I'd have to throw out my entire idea. Remembrance is the section where you play as one of the 13 main characters in something more akin to an adventure game and put together the 13 jigsaw puzzles I mentioned earlier. And yes, I said adventure game. 13 Sentinels is not a visual novel, it's more of a traditional adventure game. Each of the 13 stories for the 13 characters have their own quirks, and the story is just brimming with references to some of the most popular science fiction properties you can think of. One could be full of sci-fi movie cliches, the other's laid out like a detective story. Sometimes different actions in a character's route will cause different events to happen in a way that's like some light puzzle solving, but it never really gets overtly complicated. 13 Sentinels is somehow able to not lose focus within its large cast of unique characters and was able to make me invested in all of them by the end. You'll probably have your preferences. Personally, I genuinely like the entire cast, and it gets pretty difficult to sit here and choose a favorite out of all of them. Each one gets plenty of screen time and development that makes it hard not to like them, although I feel like some character endings fall flatter than others. Going through these different perspectives, you'll also notice moments where they intersect, and you can see an event from another character's perspective without it feeling too repetitive. Recently, I watched a friend go through Nier Automata for the first time, and you know, while I really like that game, I mean, if you paid attention earlier, I said it was one of my top three games of this generation, I also couldn't help but compare the two and how 13 Sentinels is able to handle a similar kind of perspective switch so much more elegantly. Then again, they are also pretty different, but it never feels repetitive, and thanks to the game letting you hear the internal thoughts of all the characters, you'll even get to acquire some of their own insight into a scene. All of this is what makes 13 Sentinels feel like a narrative that only works in an interactive format like a video game, and, and in a medium where the largest and loudest are just trying their hardest to mimic big budget Hollywood movies, it's nice to have a game whose story can only be told using the medium it was made for. Progression in 13 Sentinels is non-linear, you choose which character or section you want to tackle at that moment. Maybe you want to do a few battles in the destruction mode before tackling someone's story. Everyone's playthrough can be different. When you select an event, you could get a piece of information that leads you to piecing something together before another person would, but the game is designed in such a way to prevent you from getting too far ahead at points by making the smart story locks at crucial moments. I don't write fiction stories, I don't even know how to begin how difficult it was for the team to organize and write this story, making sure that no piece of information is given out too early. Like I said at the beginning of the video, you won't get any spoilers. This is really the kind of story you should see for yourself, and sure, I guess you could look up the cutscenes online if you're a loser or something, but <laughs> part of the adventure is deciding your own route and event order through the story, and following which plot threads you think are the most interesting. The story in 13 Sentinels really does start to come together the further you get into the story. Early on, you're given so much information and so many twists that it can get a little confusing, but by the end, you're able to take every single puzzle piece you got from those 13 aforementioned jigsaw puzzles and fit it all nicely together into a large picture that makes sense. That large puzzle in the game is the game's in-game timeline that lays out every single event into its chronological order. I hope this review hasn't come off as too vague or esoteric or something like that. 13 Sentinels can be a really hard game to describe and even harder game to describe without spoiling it. Having a story so confident in its structure and narrative storytelling isn't something I've seen in a while and I think that 13 Sentinels really shows off what I think is so poignant about using games as a medium for storytelling. Its non-linear form of story progression lends itself to player choice, deciding how you want the story to play out, but its adequately structured plot points make it so you're not getting ahead of where the story wants you to be. 13 Sentinels uses its music and gameplay to influence the narrative and reinforce its strengths. 13 Sentinels is like a bespoke full course meal that I've ordered at a fancy restaurant. Every single piece of it is something that appeals to me specifically, which is why I found myself loving the game as much as I did, and I hope I was somehow able to convince you to give it a chance if you haven't already. If you like this video, want to see more, you can click subscribe, follow me on social media, I'm sad on Twitter, I sometimes stream. Uh, make Definitely making more videos after this, I finally got out of the weird rut I was in. Uh, with like writer's block after college. Anyway, thanks for watching.